You are now watching a Lucky Penny Shop product feature. Hey, it's Lucky Penny Shop. Thanks for stopping by today. I really appreciate it. Hope you're as excited as I am that I'm finally getting to my Bendai Pizza Kitchen Kanupun set. Now this set, hard to find. I got it on eBay years ago, and I thought one day I think I'm going to show everybody this set. So I recently showed it, and that gave me the initiative to finally get it done. Now this is from 2006, and then there's a 2009 copyright on there, made in China. So I was able to use my Chinese Google Translator to read a lot what was going on, which helped me out. And then you can see all the nice pretty pictures and colors on the box, the pizza, the nuggets. This side panel just shows you how the set folds up how to display your items, you have a little pizza oven, and then this side kind of just gives you more pictures and details of what the set's all about. Then the back, of course, there's this caution section. Now remember, this is not for eating like the other kits that I've done. This one is strictly for playtime. Think of this like a sophisticated type of Play-Doh set where you're playing, making food, putting it in your little pretend oven and deep fryer or whatever it is, and then basically you get the throw this away when you're done making it but at the time they were selling refill sets so you'd be able to buy the refill set and continue using your play set and here's some other sets that were available at that time and that's really about it so what i want to do now is get everything out of the box and we'll take a look at all the pieces lay it all out learn about it and then of course continue this process till i get the end result my final pizza display so let's get started all right here we go now i had to open it originally to get out the instructions so that i can translate everything so here's the instruction that i'm going to follow and then here's the parts guide again how this works here are the refills and other sets and then this basically gives me the instructions on making the food items so that's really it the rest is kind of up to the person that's making it so here's a nice little brochure of the time there was the cake kitchen this one here i can't read it's very small hamburger kitchen yeah that was the hamburger kitchen kind of gives you a little recipe looking cards this is the cookie kitchen what have i need to have done all these now these are actually my cutouts so i cut this out for the food that you're seeing on like the pizzas if i want to put mushrooms there's little faint outlines so that's going to be a process and it looks like you don't cut anything that's super important and they show you little scissors there and then how to arrange if you want to arrange your pizza like this look it looks like a face is that what they're trying to make there and then here's a way to arrange now i don't know maybe i'll follow that maybe i won't it looks very interesting we will see all right then they also give you a little dvd which i have played which I wish I could play for you. I'm not sure about copyright, but it's pretty neat. It's a little like the actual commercials of the time. I'll consider that. We'll see. And then here is what looks to be just a cutout sheet. So I'll just lay everything out here. Let me just get this all out. And then we'll see. Okay, so there's this cardboard insert here. This will actually help me later when I'm trying to put all this back in. And then, as you can see, Nicely packed in there. Never played with before. There's my pizza kitchen. And then this is just an insert. So I'll leave that there. And then here's my packs. And then here's my some tools. My little deep fryer. Look at that cool little kitchen, kitchen utensils. My mixing bowls. Some more packs. More pieces. This looks like my pizza oven. Okay, so there's all the pieces. All right, so I don't think I will bore you with the removal of all the plastic. And then I will come back after it's all cut out. And nicely, well, let's just take out one. Let's take this out. This should be easy to do without doing much damage to the plastic bags. I like to label the bags so I know what went where. But I know that the biggest bag held this really cool look at that and there's an opening there oh this is going to be neat a slider here okay look at that pretty cool let me drop this down so you can get a nice side look at this one overall i think this is going to be a 
pretty fun kit. All right, so you can do that, open and close it, lock it, and then that one has got a little lever on it. All right, I'll be back. I'll get this a little more organized, kind of get a feel for it, and then we'll get started. Okay, I am back. All right, so these items up front here were the items that were in the little plastic bag, and that includes another sheet for cutting out little vegetables and shrimps and other items to put on my pizza. And then this is the menu, and the menu goes... I move this up here into the little menu board and it's got four pages so you kind of decide what do you want on the front of your menu board as people walk by your pizza kitchen. Let's put this one in there. Okay, and then you have these stickers. Okay, and the stickers actually uh, like this one is for the nuggets so you put that around the nuggets, it wraps around that. And these are all shown inside the actual pizza kitchen so we'll get to that and now all the mixes are to the right and then you have the oven here this is where I'm gonna be pretend cooking my pizza crusts in the little brick oven and then of course all the tools are down here it looks like I've got the pizza cutter this is for the fryer a spatula like a little cutting tool and a little server for my pizzas and then this is the chicken legs and the little nuggets they're textured on the inside there, you can see them there. And then, of course, a little measuring cup, a couple plates, my measuring bowls. This here is the fryer. It's two pieces, so you could take it apart. You put your oil in the top, and that's where you pretend fry. Now, what else did I notice? Oh, this sheet here is actual ingredients that are in the mixes. Very interesting. I was able to scan them. I won't show them to you now. Maybe later at some point. I'm not sure, but that's everything that's in each of the different mixes. And then in the back, here I can show you this. I didn't notice this, but this uh, when this comes down, okay, come on down. I have a hard time getting my finger in there, I guess. There is a lifting piece in here where you lift up and there you can now have your cool pizza kitchen. Now the prices, like these prices here are put down here and then on the inside walls, probably on the outside, however you want to do it. I'm not sure whatever you want to do where you put those. So I'll have to decide that. Okay, that's everything that's in there. So now I'm going to clear everything out and then I'll work on the decal sheet, decide what I'm going to put on, where I'm going to use it, and then get my kitchen set up before I start making all the foods. All right, here we go. I'm going to do some of the stickers and cut some of these up. I have some scissors off to the side. Couple pairs, depending on how detailed cutting I want to do there. And then I did want to show you this. The first one it says for pizza, and then look at the ingredients list. I know that translates to that. At least that's what my phone is telling me. Let's see: sodium alginate, potassium sulfate, potassium pyrophosphate, potassium polyphosphate, cellulose powder, microcrystalline cellulose, gluconolactate lactone, baking soda, silica particles, caramel, edible red number three, aluminum lake, edible yellow number four, aluminum lacquer, plant carbon black, and glucose. Well, I just wanted to show you that. People do say, what's in these types of kits? That gives you an idea. A lot of ingredients. Now, how accurate that is, I don't know, but I just thought it'd be fun to show you. All right. Now, what do I want to do? I want to get this on for my nuggets. And then I do want to cut some things for you. Now I'll do some of this on camera, but I think the majority of the detail work I will do off camera because I do have a lot of mixing and preparation to do, but at least now I have my little pizza kitchen nugget set. And then I noticed one of the bigger stickers, this one here on the box, they show this one right in here like this, okay? So let's try to be as accurate as possible. It's like uh, static electricity is making it stick down or move. Here, how about I do it this way and see if I can get this to line up the way I want it. There we go, that's better. Okay. And then they show other assorted stickers inside and around. And then I do want to get these front ones on while we're here together. Oh, that'll be nice if it could stay like that. Now, let's see, one, two, three, four. 
you don't know the distance. I will temporarily put them here to kind of get an idea on them as even as possible. Two. Three. It's almost like above each of those little hinge areas. See how tight that is over there? Okay. So, let's see if I put this one about here. This one starting right on that hinge. This one about here. And then this one right about here. That's that's pretty close. Not perfect. So let's move this one over slightly. This one over slightly. Okay, you see why I need to do this off camera? Because I'll probably just take too much time doing this. And uh, I don't want to take too much time. You know, with all the things going on with YouTube. The longer my videos are, uh, that causes issues. Never used to in the past, but... Okay, I would say that's pretty good. All right, so now I'll finish those and put more on. Let me just see here. These, look how tiny these are. Now, I don't know if you can see it. There's little lines going around them. So you can probably either cut right on the line or you can cut, let's say since I'm cutting out this piece of lettuce leaf, I want to give myself as close as possible to the edge so you don't see those when you're putting your pizza together. And I'm not going to put lettuce on my pizza, but it was just the first thing I cut out based on the size. I figure I'll start with a easier one and then I'll maybe move to the basil. So yes, I, I don't think this is necessarily a little kid set. Remember earlier I said, you know, it's like Play-Doh. It was just the concept of Play-Doh where you can create food and Play-Doh has little stoves and little frying pans, which I've shown on video, by the way. So you may wonder, wow, it seems like a real waste of time. Well, not if you like and enjoy this kind of stuff. I think there's something sticky on these scissors. See how small? There we go, my first little piece. All right, so I will keep going here. Let me do a tomato for you. It would be nice to find more sets, but I think economically it's just not in the not in the cards right now. And a little tomato. So there you can kind of see what you have to do. All right, I will uh, keep checking back. I want to get some mushrooms. I like mushroom on my pizza. And uh, when I get this all done, then I'll be back to where I should be able to start the mixes. Maybe I'll check in one more time as I cut more of these. I'll do that. I'll be back in just a little bit. It's taken a while to get to that point, as you can tell from the speeded up video. I decided to put that in there just so you can see that I took the time to cut all these out because these are going on my pizzas. Now I wanted to get at least four of each. I need a couple more. I have three shrimp, so I was going to do a couple more shrimp. I'm guessing the big leaves of lettuce might look good as decorations underneath the... Um, 
chicken legs or something. I know they, I noticed they did put uh, some accent colors underneath the plate, so I might do that. Maybe I'll put the nuggets out on top of a piece of lettuce when they're done. All right, so I had to get tweezers, had to get a sharper tool. This is what I ended up with now for cutting. Let me see if I can get you a nice closer shot of that. There's everything that's going in my, on my pizzas. All right, well, there you go. So I think that's enough cutting for now. I'm gonna finish putting on my decals and then I'll need my stickers and then I will come back. saw I got all my stickers where I wanted them now they don't really show you on the box at least I couldn't find anywhere I kind of matched up as many as the ones that I can see from the pictures just to get it close to what they had it but I noticed theirs on the box were not even straight especially those front ones all right so this I noticed now looking at the pictures will work for the base of this okay so you can use it for your pizza oven and then when you're ready to do the deep frying for your chicken, then you just move the base to that. So it'll work on either one. Okay, that's it. I'm officially set now. My pizza kitchen is open. All right, here we go. I'm in my pizza kitchen now. So the first packet is, they show it kind of rolled up here. That's the crust. And then this says, do not eat. War There's warnings on here about eating. Of course, you do not eat it. And this actually was still good to 2015 in regards to um, the powder so we'll see if it's still good all right so we need that we need the spatula and we'll need our water okay so this now the instructions say eight cc's of water here we go so let's put in the powder it's a very fine powder and it's a like a light very light brown. Okay. Now I have to spread this between two, but they give you a second packet, so it looks like you can make a second round if you want to. All right, eight cc's of water. Now we mix this up and we put this in our pizza pans. You just don't want lumps. And then once it's in the pizza pan, you have to let this sit, it says for about 15 minutes, but we gotta get them in the oven. It's starting to feel thicker as I mix. You saw that list of ingredients, so you know it's definitely got a lot of chemicals in it to make it do what it needs to do. The water is your reactor, so once you get the water mixed in, okay, this looks pretty good. Now they do say put a little bit in each and try to get it as even as possible. All right, here we go. Pizza number one. Okay, now let's get some in this one. Okay, let's scrape a little bit more out. I'd say it's pretty even. Let me get a little more in this one. Okay, now we'll just kind of spread it around a little. Okay, remember that's actually the bottom of the pizza now. All 
Let's move this one around. Okay, we'll let these set now for 15 minutes, but I will be back. Well, it doesn't even drip anymore. Let's see, maybe I can get a couple little more drips on this one. Okay, I'd say it's scraped out pretty good. Okay, let's get these in the pizza oven. Here we go. Let me just take us up there. As you can see, I have my kitchen all set up back there. All right, pizzas go in. That is the crust, by the way, not the whole pizza yet. Okay, so I'll be back in 15 minutes. All right, here we go. My pizzas are ready to come out of the oven. Let's take a look at them. Ooh, nice and piping hot. Now they've been for sitting for about 15 minutes like they suggested. So let me move them down here. Look at that. Pretty good. And then now I need to get my two plates in here because we need to put them on the plates. These are the pizza pans or plates, whatever you want to call them. And then let me grab my little tool. So this tool now is to get them off and on the little plates. Okay. That was easy. Let's flip them down. All right, there's one. Came out pretty good. And then let's do the second one. They did want you to touch them with your finger after 15 minutes to make sure that it was the, that it was, you know, solidified correctly. Ooh, come on, get on there. There we go. It still has a mushiness to it, like my little tool hit that little edge there when I flipped it like that. Okay, those are all set. All right, let me come right back and get ready to do the pizza sauce. All right, so time for my pizza sauce. Now in the back, you will see my translator. I thought it would be fun to show you everything that was in the sauce. Maybe I'll do that for each one. Sodium alginate, cellulose powder, caramel, edible red number three, this aluminum lake, I'm not sure, might be translating incorrectly. Liquid paraffin, dextrose, and starch. All right, so now you kind of know what's in that one. As accurate as my translator is, by the way. All right, so this one now is four cc's of water. And then that makes the tomato sauce. So let me get this open. I couldn't reference these B4s, so I'm not sure. I don't see those numbers anywhere. There's another one on that other one, too. I couldn't figure out exactly what they were referencing there. Now this is a really pink powder. Okay, that one is set. And then four cc's. Now this gets spread on the pizzas, so they want you to do it right after you mix it. Here we go. Yeah, it's turning a darker red now, just like a tomato sauce or pizza sauce. Okay, they just show you Sprinted it on, so let's get our pizzas in here. There's pizza number one, and number two. Okay, here we go. Oh, a little bit of powder on the side there. Just like you would when you put pizza sauce on. That's what I do. I kind of put it in the, the middle and I get a 
round spoon and I twist it around. Here, let me hold it. Okay, that's a nice looking sauce. I just made fresh pizza the other day, actually, not too long ago. I don't know if you remember or watched the video with me eating that olive tapenade. I put some of that on the pizza just to see what it was like and it came out pretty good. Okay, there we go. All right, sauce is on. Now it doesn't say anything about letting it sit. I didn't translate that. Now I need to make the meat. They're like little meatballs on there. So let's do that next. All right, so time for the meat. Now that looks like little chunks of Bobby sausage on top. You gotta form them into little shapes. But here's what's in the meat. Sodium alginate, potassium sulfate, potassium pyrophosphate, potassium polyphosphate, baking soda, cellulose powder, caramel, liquid paraffin, edible red number three, aluminum lake again, edible blue number one, and aluminum lake starch. So that aluminum lake must stand for something. All right, so my pizzas have been sitting, and now they want, this is five cc's. The little measuring cup that they give you has little red lines, so that's what I'm following on there. All right, let's check out what this powder looks like. It's always interesting to see what the powders look like. They even tell you on the bag, five cc's of water, and then I'm not sure what that is really, but there's little hearts next to it. There's the back. Okay, here we go. Let's see what color. Okay, so it's almost like a purple. Let's see. Yeah, it's like a purplish color. And after this is the cheese, so we're almost done with the pizza part. Now this they show it actually forming in your hands in the bowl and then taking it in your hands and breaking off little pieces. Look at that, it almost turned brown instantly. Cool. It's amazing how it changes colors like that from purple to brown. So this needs to be a little more doughy. So now it's like we're making our own Play-Doh color, right? Hey, look at that. Now for smells, I know I'm curious about smells. I wonder if you are too. Let me give this one a... Yeah, it kind of smells like a medical facility, if you've ever been in one. Okay, there we go. It's like a chunky dough now. Okay. And then let's bring in the pizzas. So I guess it must be okay to touch it because they say you break it off with your fingers. Now I'm gonna make these quite small. I don't want them too big. I don't want my pizza to look strange, you know, like it's got huge chunks of meat on it. And then I'll press them into my sauce just a little. Now they sure give you a lot of meat for these tiny pizzas here. And I'm gonna also make them different sizes. They just show them going around the exterior. And for those of you that don't like meat, I should, uh, I guess I can just get rid of this and just have a meat pizza and a veggie pizza for you. How's that sound? Let me move this one over slightly. Squeeze this in there. Okay, there we go. Okay, so I know they say to put them on both pizzas, but you know, what if you don't like meat? So that's the meat one, and that's going to be the vegetarian one. 
I'll just see what happens to this and at the end of the video we'll come back and check it out. So it has like a Play-Doh-y consistency to it. Alright, so now it's time for the cheese. Okay, check it out. This one has sodium alginate, baking soda, cellulose powder, gluconolacetone, silica fine particles of liquid paraffin, edible yellow number four, aluminum lake, and the glucose and starch. Okay, that's if you've ever wanted to know what was in these mixes. Now, as you can see, there is Swiss cheese on there, and, uh, you know, that's not what you normally put on pizza, but it's recognizable as a cheese, so you know you're using the right packet. Eight cc's of water. Here we go. Oh, my meat product is now in, like, a little tray. It's still soft, so we'll keep progress on that. I'm curious to see if it's just a white... It is just a white powder almost off-white okay and then 8 cc's and then here again they just show this being spread out on top Now this would be the cheese after it's melted, right? And then after this, they really wanted me to cut up all these, but see, I wanted that done so it's ready and I can move on to the next step. How's that look? Pretty good? Cheesy to you? Almost like vanilla pudding to me. Well, it feels like it's starting to Definitely thicken up. Now, a couple of the other ones it said do not over mix. So I don't know, you know, unless you do this a few times, what over mixing is. I just want to make sure I got all the lumps out. And I missed one. Okay. Well, it's okay to have lumpy cheese, right? There we go. Pizza number one. Pizza number two. And then they just show it being spread on. the top that's going to cover up my meat it's already starting to set just a little we'll try to leave a couple of those meat chunks exposed There are a couple of them meatballs are poking out of the side. Then this one is just my veggie. But as you can see, the sauce is not running into the cheese, so it's hardened up already. Now for cleanup, I've just been taking a paper towel and wiping off the little spatula and wiping out the little bowl. Okay, there we go. All right, I like it. It's slightly uneven like a pizza anyway. All right, so that is set. Now, they want you to, well, let me just check what's next. I believe they want me to decorate these and put them in the oven, so let me get set up for that. Okay, remember now, they had suggestions inside the little booklet. There's the pizza DIY, and you can Follow these steps to get to that pizza, and then follow those steps to get those cool pizzas. But I think since I have a veggie pizza on this side, I am going to make one similar. I'm going to have to use a tweezers. Let me get my booklet out of there. I'll set this here, and then I'll just start placing things. Kind of like they do, but my own way. If you notice, the cheese is starting to bubble. I'd say the hardest part so far of everything was just cutting those little, all those little pieces. I think I cut way more than I needed. All right, so they had eggs, but I think I'm going to take um, these. I'll 
put these on the cheeks. The little green pepper round, which I cut out the centers. And then I'll have a tomato. This will be my veggie. There, happy tomato with happy cheeks. And we'll give him a couple mushrooms on his head. Okay, I like that one. Okay, there we go. That is pizza number one. So that'll be pushed off to go into the oven. Now this one, this one gonna have meat on it. We'll arrange the sausages around. I've already got the meatballs on there, right? I think that's pepperoni. It's kind of what it looks like. We'll call this one the garbage pizza. Couple shrimps. Whoa, that shrimp popped way out. Whoa. Okay, we'll get a asparagus in the middle. And then here, why, why not put a sausage in there? next to each side. Okay, there's my, basically, a meat lover topped with everything, pizza. I don't think I'll be able to squeeze an egg in, but at least you know that I cut those out. And there you go, I'd say that pizza looks really good. All right, so now these need to go in, back into the oven and let them sit, and then we'll move on to the chicken. Okay, so now the ingredients on the chicken. Let's see, sodium alginate, baking soda, silica particles, edible yellow four, aluminum shade caramel, liquid paraffin, edible red three, aluminum lake, starch edible oil powder. Okay, let's get that out of the way. Just thought that, uh, well, that's interesting, isn't it? All right, I had to bring in some extra plates because they show the pizzas and the chickens on their own plates, but there's only two shown on the box, so I brought in my own. It's nice to have little plates that kind of match the set, so those will be for my chicken. So this is for 12 cc's of water. You see you're kind of mixing there, and then that's really it. That's all I can show you on that. We'll see what color it is. So I'm gonna shape this and form this. This is almost like a peach color. Here, I will show you. Okay, so it is. It's a very light peach, and then, like I said, 12 cc's of water. And then mix it and form it into your shapes. And I'll see, because they kind of show two chicken legs and about 10 of the little chicken nugs, but I don't know if that's going to be exactly how this is going to turn out. Wait, let me do it this way. Oh, it sticks like the meat. The meat is still holding up pretty good, by the way. It's still flexible. Wow, this really stuck fast. So like the meat, you gotta really just press it and shape it in here. Okay, I'd say all the powder is good. Let's get this in my fingers. Yeah, so it holds up pretty good. Do you want to see the meat? Let's check out the meat. So it's still flexible, but not as mushy. 
This almost has like a chickeny exterior to it. So let's at least get one thing molded here. I don't want it too flat because I want it to resemble a chicken. So let me do just one chicken leg and see. These nugs are pretty small. There's my little nug. Nug number one. Yeah, I probably made my chicken leg a little too big because I wanted it to be rounded. Yeah, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna grab this tool over here. Oh, watch my pizzas. My fingers are slippery. And I'll remake this a little bit less. This way I can get two out of this. There, that's better. I can't wait to see the little fryer. I'm really curious on how that's going to work. Let's set these here, and then I'll just keep dropping the nugs in. chicken leg. Okay. Let's get another chicken leg. Full production now. Well, I hope you're enjoying this so far, whoever has stuck around this long. I know there's a lot of steps to really understand these kits. Yeah, it looks like I'm going to get the 10. And this is my first attempt, so. I was a little nervous, honestly, before I started. Yes, with so many videos, I still get a little nervous when I'm doing something new. That one's a little weak. Let's redo you. So I have two, four, six. Yeah, it's gonna be really close. Okay. There's just a tiny bit left. I'll just use it on this last one. That'll be my giant nug. I use nug short for nugget. Chicken nugget. Actually, you know what? Let me add a little bit to this guy. There we go. I'm going to wash my hands, get my oil ready. That's the last one we really need to see what's in it. And then fry these up. Okay, so the next one is the oil. What's in the oil? Well, it is potassium lactate, sodium fumarate, edible yellow number four, aluminum lake, glucose. Okay. Now this calls for 70 cc's, 10 times 7. So they want the liquid in first and then the powder. Let me see, it didn't really say that. It actually shows 
It just says mix well, so let me get the water in so I don't get any lumps in it, and then I can sprinkle and mix as I go. All right, so if we do 15, that gives me a little more option here. That's 15. That's 30. Let's do that two more times. That'll get us the 60 cc's. It doesn't seem as full as they showed in the picture, but maybe they don't want too much in there. Okay. And then 10 more cc's. This is supposed to have a frying effect, but I just want to make sure, you know, maybe with the age. Okay. Now let's mix this in. Oh, this is what the front looks like. And that's what the back looks like. It says mix well, that's all I know. It's kind of like a yellowish color. Kind of does look like fry oil, doesn't it? Okay. Let's just uh, zoom this camera in a little bit more so we get a nice shot from this angle. And then let me get my little tool here. And we'll just, here, I'll tell you what, they show you drop it in with your finger like this, so I'll do it like they show, we'll see if we get any frying. Get in there. Okay, I'm not getting much. There are a bunch of little bubbles around it. Let me see if you can see that. So there are tiny bubbles. Ooh, tiny bubbles in my fryer okay they don't give you a specific time so what I think I want to do then is grab that one out I want to just strain it it doesn't really change it much and then drop in the next one okay so it could just be the age Oh, there it's actually bubbling pretty good. But you got to see it from the top, not through the plastic. Let me give you a look right in it. See it? And then I'll move it around a little. Let me get my camera a little bit better set there. Look. Okay, let me put a fresh piece. Let me put some of my nugs in there. It sure does look like chicken right out of the fryer. Okay, I'll drop some of these in. Bloop. Not as exciting as I was expecting, but Still, something different to check out. I will show you looking at the two, the color has slightly changed. It's gotten a little lighter. These have not been in there.
All right, time for me to turn my kitchen around. I think I'll get a couple of little veggies on my plates to display my chicken. I have to move this to the little chicken nugget case. And I am almost done, so I will be back. All right, some final preparations. I need to get my nuggets in the little case here. So I decided I'm going to transfer. They are a little soggy from that oil, but I'm going to leave some. If you notice my little trays, I had those trays from somewhere, a restaurant or something. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to put these in this and then put the extras like it's a little storage tray okay that's done i like the way that looks remember this is not for eating it's just for playing so however you want to set it up is how you want to set it up the price is there like the chicken legs i'll put in here i thought this might be a good time to add the uh to lettuce so i'm going to put my lettuce leaves here kind of like an accent for each one There we go. How's that? Does that look nice? Okay. And then there. One thing I did notice with the little bowl was that these were nesting bowls. Not till I was cleaning up did I realize that when I took them out, but now I realize it. I think that's pretty good. So overall, check that out. I bet you want me to cut into one of my pizzas. Let me do that. Let me pull one up here on the table which one which one the meat one let's do the meat one let's see if I can push it from back here there's a little ledge there so it makes it harder to get out order up okay and then you take your little pizza cutter here I'll put it right on another little plate I do wish I would have had four plates though that's the only thing I think I would wish if I had an option but if you've got more of these sets then you probably can have more plates. All right, here we go. Here, let's cut it this way so you can see. Ch -ch 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 -ch. Do you like slices like this or square? I guess it would depend on your pizza. Recently, I've been making square pizzas. Okay, there you go. So there is no eating or tasting. Now let me let me do this here. This is my meal for the day. Okay. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. I had fun making it. Hope you liked this set and learned about it. And thanks for watching and supporting Lucky Penny Shop. And for those of you that made it all the way through the video, I really appreciate it. Now look in that description for a playlist of other sets. Maybe not like this. I might have some other edible sets in that playlist. Otherwise, thanks for watching and supporting Lucky Penny Shop. Later! If you're looking for the item you just saw in the video, click here. Watch more videos by clicking here. Don't forget to share on social media and give a thumbs up. Hey, LPS Dave. What's up, Butch? Make sure they don't forget to subscribe. Oh yeah, please click here to subscribe to Lucky Penny Shop. And always remember when you see a Lucky Penny, pick it up!